bit of action before we even head out. A big school of Trevally loaded up underneath the wharf, right at the boat ramp. After a tricky summer in the Upper North Island with mostly rain and bad winds, we were glad to enter into autumn with a spot of good weather. Conditions were looking favourable for a big day out. On the way to our destination, we found this big platform that must have broken away from somewhere, maybe a marina or something. Dan jumped in and checked underneath it to see if there's any fish, but it was too fresh to hold anything. <laughs> Once at our first location, it was absolutely stunning. We had inky, inky blue water and just clouds and clouds of fish. Kingfish were on the menu today, and for sure there was going to be some in the area with the fish behaving like this. I'll run this clip through just to give you an idea of what we're doing hanging around these bait fish waiting for the predators to come in. When the kohiru are lit up like this with the yellow stripes it means they're getting chased by something. And in most cases, that's going to be a kingfish in New Zealand. We're checking out as the odd kingfish comes through them, looking for the one that we want to shoot. In this situation, you just want to hang around with the bait. We're obviously in a good spot here as all this bait is staying in this one place. Sometimes it pays to wait and let the fish come to you. And in the meantime, it was an incredibly stunning view. Soon enough, a mob of kingfish come in and Sophie decides on the one she wants to get. When approaching a kingfish, Sophie's doing the right thing, she's getting down towards their level and notice how comfortable they're becoming. She's equipped with her 100 centimeter Reef Pro Weddy gun and makes really good solid contact. Just showing that you don't necessarily need a really big gun to punch through a nice fish. It's clear to see the fish is really badly hurt and not fighting too hard, but with these days and the shark problems you tend to have in the Haraki Gulf, I always make sure to dive down and get a second shot in. We want to secure this fish and get it out of the water as fast as possible. The more commotion, the more chance of sharks. A good way to try and avoid getting tangled up is knifing the kingfish when it comes past. I managed to land a good blow on the head which stuns it and I can icky it quickly without having to worry about getting tangled in the spear shafts or the mono. This is why it pays to have a really nice sharp knife. A great start and who doesn't love some raw kingfish. And from here on out the dive just got better and better. With all the commotion I noticed this John Dory swimming from out deep over the top of the kelp. I'm cameraman today so Sophie makes the descent to have a go. Again this amazing visibility you could clearly see this John Dory from the surface in around about 15 or 16 meters of water.
John Dory can be opportunist feeders. So with all this commotion and all the bait fish around, it's obviously attracted this fish in. You can see on the surface the visibility is incredible. We're so lucky to have this available to us so close to the main centre in New Zealand. We were clearly on a hot spot. I whipped the guts out of the kingfish and found a fresh kohiru in there and began burling this together. It didn't take long and more and more fish turned up. You'll see there's a big snapper down below the tame kingfish and tame smaller snapper. It was getting really exciting. Normally it would seem a really difficult prospect to try and shoot a big snapper like this in open water. But one of the most important things to learn when you're spearfishing is reading fish's behavior. Snapper, typically a really, really spooky fish, they can really let their guard down, especially if there's burly in the water. And as you can see, we've got the sun coming from directly above us, making it really difficult for that snapper to see us. Again, I'll leave this clip running through and just show you how we're sort of taking our time biding our time, waiting for the correct moment to have a go. I can watch the body language of the snapper as it circumnavigates around the area. And you can see with time it's becoming more and more friendly and just, it's starting to really let its guard down. I keep a steady flow of that kingfish guts and that kohiru. And eventually the snapper is going to give in. With all these other fish feeding in the burley, it's not going to be able to help itself. But rather than making a dive on it while it's still being really cautious and staying on the fringes around us, speak to Sophie and tell her just to hold off. As soon as I see its body language change to come towards a book early, I tell Sophie to make a dive. She'll be able to intercept it too quickly for it to spook off. She does a great job and gets right into range, a perfect close-up shot, but maybe a bit of buck fever and I think she either clips it or just misses the fish. You can miss the big ones sometimes, but she did a really good approach. John Wall was next up. Again, he makes a great approach. The snapper are becoming a little bit more spooky. With his 120 Reef Pro, he lands a really long shot right at the end of the range. A perfect execution of shooting a nice snapper in open water. John's playing the fish really carefully as we can't see the flopper out the other side just yet, even though it turns out the steer went right the way through. He makes his way down, keeping pressure on that spear and then pushes it through. You always want to keep tension on your line and your spear, otherwise your flopper can close and the fish gets off.
And in true super diver fashion, he rips the knife out with his mouth and dispatches a really nice fish. This dive was just a dream day in the water. It just kept getting better and better and we just seemed to encounter so many great fish. This is a really nice looking spot and often holds either big snapper or big golden snapper. It's not very deep and you can see this one, we could see it from the surface. Golden snapper can be a sought after fish for spearfishers because they're normally found in deeper water. But during the autumn months after summer, you will find them in shallower water. It's a good time for us to go looking for them as they're either coming up shallow for, it must be something to do with spawning or feeding. Let's show the water. What's that? They're obviously not a difficult fish to spear when found, but they are good eating. It seemed we couldn't go anywhere without seeing these big golden snapper. Finding another one sitting in this beautiful gut way. If you dive places with close proximity to really deep water, that come up nice and shallow and have nice big cracks and caverns, there's a good chance you could find golden snapper at the right time of year. We left this one alone. I made my way up to the pressure point at the front of this reef, as that's most likely where I'm gonna find the fish. I can see the congregations of Kohiru and Demozales, as well as there's some Trevally down deep in the odd snapper. But something I didn't notice on the way down was this big scorpion fish sitting right on top of the rock. See if you spot it before I did. I just about land right on top of it. As it takes off, I just have a quick look to see where it lands, as I might go look for it later in the dive. Scorpion fish are a little bit like that golden snapper, not difficult to spear when found, but make good eating and in certain times of the year you'll find more of them in shallow. I progressively make my way down deeper over this edge, and in this beautiful visibility I can see right down to the bottom there. My one issue is, which we often find when spearing, is my float line isn't long enough. I spot this mob of Trevally, but I've got to the end of my float line and I can't get any deeper. This is a great example of why I often dive with a real gun. It gives me that freedom of not having restriction from my float line. But the downside to me using a real gun is I can get myself in trouble if I shoot a big fish in deep water. If you're shooting kingfish or other bigger fish, it's actually far safer to use a gun without a reel. Having this tag line or your float line, I'm able to let my gun go at any point in time. But in this case, my float line's caught on that rock and I have to unwind more line. Whenever I use a float line, I often use a line winder like this. This allows me to adjust the amount of float line I have out and make sure I don't have too much out when in shallow and more out when I head out deeper. Mm -hmm. 
I plan on making a much deeper dive to try and get down towards the bottom, just to see what might be down there. This is a brilliant spot and really spectacular and nice clear water. Nice big gutway with big boulders and often holds lots of fish. Today it seems to be mostly occupied by poor eye and pink mau mau. Without seeing anything interesting, I bail on my dive early and begin my ascent. But again, the annoyance of a float line and lots of current. My float line's got caught on that corner of the rock there at about 26 or 27 meters, which is really annoying. This can be the pain with using a float line, and it takes me a couple of dives to free it. Being frustrated with the situation, I head back on top of the rock and I'm going to attempt to see if I can find that scorpion fish. I know he's in the kelp here somewhere and they can be really difficult to spot with their camouflage at times. Rather than damage my spear, I'm just going to stab it just behind the hard part of their head right in that soft part. Scorpion fish is not something that I'd spear all the time, a bit like golden snapper, but it's a nice treat and I really enjoy eating them. The flesh is firm and really nice flavor. Go great in lots of nice dishes. When handling one of these, you've got to be so careful as they have lots of spines coming off their head, their back, down at their pectoral fins. And if you get spiked by these, you're gonna feel really bad for yourself. So often I try and grab around their mouth and then icky just behind the hard part of their head back towards their brain. You get plenty of meat off one of these, so there's no need for me to shoot any more today. It was getting towards the end of the day and we we're just going to do one more dive before we headed back. This place was loaded with lots of pink mau mau, snapper and kingfish. So I made a dive to the bottom just to see what else might be around. And a common theme for the day looking in this hole, another golden snapper. But much like the scorpion fish, Sophie had already speared once, there was no need for me to shoot this one. Just deciding if I'm going to shoot one of these curious pink mau mau. Most of the ones right in my face are quite small and I want to take a long shot. But I clean miss this one. Which turns out to be a good thing. As right out the corner of my eye comes this big bronze whaler. None of us had actually shot a fish at this point. But these seem to be very, very friendly.
They obviously know what the sound of a boat is and a gun going off, and this one's coming up to inspect Sophie on the surface. I, I got swarmed on the bottom. It was really uncomfortable. Mm. I was wondering why you're so nervous. I'm like, what are you worried about? I that? shot and missed and started swimming up. It just wasn't concentrated. They just swarmed me. Jesus, look at the, look at those monster mosquitoes. I just swallowed one before. It does pay to be really cautious in situations when there's lots of bronze whalers getting excited, as when they can gather up numbers, sometimes they'll really misbehave. Me being the brave guy that I am, I shoot a pink mammo right under the boat just to make sure that the sharks don't pinch it. And with that, we're off home after the most incredible day out on the water.